I sat down with an Ethiopian Israeli Messianic Jew and asked him about all the talk surrounding the red heifers being shipped to Israel from America, and his answer kind of surprised me. Many religious Jews believe that the temple needs to be rebuilt in Jerusalem before the Messiah can return. And the red heifer cow is required for them to sacrifice and usher in this third temple period. And as we speak right now, there is a massive altar being prepared for the red heifer sacrifice ritual in Jerusalem. Now, I find it interesting that within many religious Jews, they believe they can help usher in the coming of the Messiah. And to illustrate this point, check out this moment from 1990, where the current Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, meets the legendary Rabbi Rebbe. This is the rabbi that we recently covered in our reaction to a Dr. Michael Brown video that many Jews believe to be the Messiah, and many were expecting him to rise after his death. So this is not their first encounter, and the rabbi makes this point to Benjamin Netanyahu. Listen closely. Since we last met, things have progressed. He says many things have progressed. What hasn't changed, however, is that the Moshina, the Messiah, still hasn't come. So do something to hasten this coming. We're doing, we're doing. Apparently it's not enough. And notice Benjamin Netanyahu's entire demeanor on his face change as he's getting pressed about not doing enough to hasten the Messiah coming. Since many hours already passed today and it's still not here, there are still a few hours left in the day. So try still for today. Wow. So this red heifer sacrifice to help usher in the rebuilding of the temple is a way that they are trying to hasten their Messiah to come. And I sat down with a Messianic Jewish friend of mine from Israel to get his take on the red heifer prophecy. But first, guys, my name is Ruslan, and this channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here, if you're not new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. We reach over a million unique monthly viewers on this channel, and unfortunately, a huge percentage of you guys are not subscribed. Okay, let's get into my conversation with Emmanuel Roro. Emmanuel Roro is an interesting guy. He served in the military. He's an Ethiopian Jew that became a Christian. And he's also a widely known worship leader, not just in Israel, but beyond. He's traveled to places like Brazil, and he was recently here in America doing a tour of different worship events. All right, let's jump into this conversation. There's videos going around that are going super viral of the red heifers being raised up to be shipped over to Israel to right. You're you're, you're seeing some of this stuff. What do you what do you make of that stuff in terms of the connection to this being an end times preeminent thing mm. or setting off the course of events what do you yeah. think of that stuff so and, and are you keeping up with the red heifer stuff a uh, yeah. little bit I've, I've heard of it the fact that israel exists right now and you have people and you have jewish believers that um seeing their messiah yeshua as a savior it's like something that really given an alert of like oh something we're close we're end times mm -hmm. vibes but i see what happened October 7th really changed and shift the atmosphere in Israel. Mm -hmm. I hope um, that, um, and I'm praying that God will use that um, to bring people, more people in Gaza, all over the region, especially in Israel, mm -hmm. to know him because people lost hope. Mm -hmm. And I found my hope again in Yeshua, in, in Jesus, because I had, I, I had where to look up. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have where to look mm -hmm. up, but we offer Jesus as, mm -hmm. you know, he is the real hope for humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we will start seeing more Jews, Jew people, mm -hmm. Jewish people um, coming to faith, and I have also um, understanding that many, when a lot of Christians will show the love mm -hmm. to Israel and um, and just show their love to their Jewish Messiah and cause them jealousy, mm. and then cause their hearts to turn back um, to 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 Jesus and mm -hmm. see, oh, this is our brother, mm -hmm. this is our um, firstborn brother. Mm -hmm. That's when I would think. Jesus is coming back because mm. he said, Jesus said, until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. I won't be back. Mm. So there's like a key to his return in their salvation. Mm. You, so you're expecting revival in Israel, yeah. turning back to the Messiah yes. before he returns. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I think the, the tough part is people seem 
to struggle because Christians tend to have a heart for Israel because of some of the end times prophecy. Yeah. Israel being established as a nation and winning all these wars does seem like a miracle. Anyone that knows the history. The tough part is how does someone balance being for Israel without necessarily being giving Israel a blank check to do whatever they want? And which can change depending on who's in power and what coalition and what people this the, you know what I mean? People have yeah. to appeal to. Like, how do you balance that tension? And or, or how should we as Christians that that you know, hey, I think Israel should exist. I think Israel has, you know, it, it is, I don't think the church has replaced Israel, right? I think that God has, still has a plan for Israel, the Jewish people. However, that doesn't mean I endorse everything that is happening in every military operation, mm -hmm. but that's how you'll kind of get placed in society, yeah. right? So I'll just say, hey, I think Israel has a right to exist, and I think they need to defend themselves and prevent mm -hmm. future attacks. However, I don't know about all the military operations. Yeah. Some of this stuff seems a little heavy-handed, you know? And BB seems super sus and sketchy to me, you know? <laughs> so how how can we de detangle some of yeah. that? I believe, I, I, that's what I see, this is that right now what's happening is like, you're either for Israel, you're either not for Israel. You cannot be somewhere, you know, you cannot be, but the reality is it's not black and white. The reality is that some things happen. Yes, in, in general, yes, I'm from Israel. Yes, I'm praying for the nation of Israel. Yes, I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm praying for revival in Israel. It doesn't doesn't it doesn't mean that I'm gonna give them, like you said, a, bl a blank check to yeah. do whatever they yeah. want. Yeah. So it's like be able to, to watch. You know, it's like some people have like one um, stream of news that where they see everything and yeah. they just their opinion is based on that. Yeah. But it's like the news always fluctuate and change mm -hmm. and everything. It's mm -hmm. one day they are in the beginning of October seventh. Yeah, Israel wants to. Da, 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 da few months later they they have no mm. you know they cannot do anything so it's like always going back to the source to mm -hmm. the bible to the scriptures and and always i um, remind myself like try to put the glasses of not the physical reality of what i see like the spiritual reality mm -hmm. what, what is god is doing talk a little bit about the the viral video some people have seen and then they kind of use that to create this blanket that all israelis are anti-christian yeah uh, unpack that and who's doing that what groups are doing that and give us a bit more context on it's that. it probably was i've seen that video it's like kids like uh, the spitting on some christians walking because they basically believe that they do something like kind of um, sorcery but that's small group you know that's extreme really extremist and i've experienced that we had uh, um on june i mean june end of may where the worship night in jerusalem mm -hmm. was open to all whoever wants to come worship night for god in hebrew um which is what we do and then to that worship night many ultra orthodox jews came and they um, the extreme anti-missionaries parties mm -hmm. that came and they blocked the entrance mm. and they were like pushing them like people moms with children people that want to enter and worship and they're like pushing them like uh, missionaries don't enter yada 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 mm -hmm. it's like there's a pushback but when they come with the groups and they take usually kids that don't understand and try to you know push them back on you mm -hmm. but usually when you talk one to one to people and it's more reasonable then we understand and mm. talking with you of course we'll agree to disagree but yeah so it's not as prevalent as 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 we see on the internet meaning so so okay so hypothetically say we did a an event in Israel say I came say pastor Jeff came you led worship and we did like a one day event mm -hmm. do you think there would be pushback from what I see and experience Israel is a free country you can e express your faith mm -hmm. No matter if you are Jew, Muslim, Christian, you can do an expressive faith. Of course, if you are doing something that is mainly publicized to Israelis and stuff, some there are some um, organizations that are actually anti-missionary mm. in Israel. Anti-missionary. Anti-missionary anti organizations. But, you know, they, they, they won't be able to stop you because the law is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the police and, you know, the police will come mm -hmm. and basically will defend the event. You will yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but there might be some protest. Yeah, protests. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so how do you see this situation being resolved in terms of Hamas? Where do, where do you think this is going? And and what do you think like the next six months to a year is going to look like? Mm. Hard for me to say because right now we, we are in a moment that is really unclear. Like if you ask me like one, one two months ago, I would like to think that Israel will finish the job. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that... It won't escalate to the northern border. This mm -hmm. is what I really think uh, till now is like it won't escalate to the northern border because it would be nasty if it will. But right now in Gaza, I don't really know if they would be able. I hope I'm just praying for the hostages to come back mm -hmm. home, you know, and it's like God to set 
um, the people, those people are free. And like, I believe that God can do it even more than any politician or any uh, military or anything else. It's hard to say, but I'm hoping and I'm praying this thing will be resolved. At least the hostages will come back home mm -hmm. and we will try to build something uh, from there. Hopefully you enjoyed that conversation. Be sure to like and share it with somebody. And if you want to hear my first interview with Emmanuel on the streets of Israel, talking about his experience as a Christian living in Israel, be sure to check that out here. All right. I'll see you over there. Peace.